Hey folks, uh, my name is Bogdan, I'm a founding engineer here at Yugabyte, and today we're going to go over getting started with Yugabyte. So first things first, we're going to go to our docs page, and there's a big quick start button right there. If we click through, it should take us to the Community Edition quick start, and step number one would be actually installing Yugabyte on your, um, on your laptop. So currently I, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to go through the, through the Mac section. If you have a Linux uh, deployment or if you want to try us out in Docker or Kubernetes, feel free to, to explore the other tabs. Um, basic sanity check for your Python version. Assuming everything is fine though, we're going to go straight through downloading our targz. Um, I'm going to switch to my terminal here and just paste this command right here to download the targz. We're going to give it a couple of, couple of seconds for, uh, for this to bring it up. We do a regular release cycle, so you're going to see our uh, release in there, and we generate these targzs per operating system, and in this case, I'm just downloading the version for my Mac. And switch back, we're almost done. And after we download this, the next part would be just unpacking the archive and switching to the directory for the respective release. You're going to see a bunch of things being, uh, being unpacked, and this should be done real quick. Can validate that we're inside. And this is what our normal deployment looks like. Um, one quick thing, because I am on Mac, I do not actually have host aliases, so I'm going to set these up real quick. If you were on, uh, if you were on a Linux machine, then things would be already set up for you, and you'd have a bunch of uh, host aliases. OK, next step would be to actually create our Yugabyte deployment. So if we click on Create Local Cluster, it takes us to the next page. Again, four different deployment models, Mac, Linux, Docker, or Kubernetes. Um, first step would be to actually create the cluster, as I mentioned. So now if we switch back to the terminal, paste this command, it should spew out the output of creating, uh, creating all the nodes that, uh, that we need. First things first, we would run a status command in order to validate this. I'm going to clear my screen so this is more, uh, more obvious. Status command says we have a bunch of master and a bunch of tserver nodes. Um, now what we can do is, if we switch back to, to our UI, there will be a UI for our master and there will be a UI for our tserver. So we can quickly switch to that. This would be the master UI where you can see a bunch of information about your, your cluster, such as your overall replication factor, how many nodes you have, how many tables you have, the version, and so on and so forth. Uh, and on the right, you can see the actual master servers running on 127.0.0.1, 2, and 3, with 2 being the leader. I can uh, switch real quickly to tables, but this will be relatively boring as there's a bunch of system tables and no user tables, and also tablet servers, which shows three servers with zero load overall. And my third tab is the view for an actual tablet server. If I switch to tablets, again, this is boring right now because we have zero, ta zero tables in the system. So let's go back into, into our docs page and try to actually create some tables and run some workload against Yugabyte. Scroll to the bottom. First flavor of our API is the CloudQL API. So as before, for different, uh, for different deployments, let's pick the first, uh, the first one for Mac and try to do CQLSH and connect to our cluster. So if I switch back to my terminal, I will clear the screen again and run CQLSH. And this brings me into the shell for our, um, uh, for our deployment. Now, we will try to describe some key spaces and see what, uh, what we come up with by default, a bunch of system level, uh, system level key spaces. So let's actually try to create a user table. First things first, we actually have to create a custom key space that will be housing all our tables. We'll go with my app. Next thing, we pick up a stock market, uh, stock market table schema and we run this create table. We wait a little bit, then system finally responds. Next, we would like to actually insert some data. So I'm going to pick up a bunch of insert statements for uh, Apple, Facebook, and Google here, and run the first one, insert a bunch of stock, run the second one, insert a bunch of stock, third one, insert a bunch of stock. Um, finally, let's see, let's see if that data actually made it into the system. So let's query by Apple, and I'm going to do this right here, and then let's query by Facebook and Google, and these show up. Now what I want to show you is if I switch back to the, to the UIs of the actual uh, master and T servers, first things first will be the master UI. I will refresh this page, and what you'll notice is that now there are tablets all across the T servers. And now if I switch to the tablet server view of the world, if I refresh the tablets page, you will see a bunch of tablets for the stock market table that we just created on one of these particular um, 
uh, particular servers and you will notice that it is deemed as a follower for some tablets and the leader for other tablets. Okay, let us switch back to the docs and continue to our Yedis API. This is essentially our flavor of a Redis compatible, uh, compatible API. So if I switch back to my terminal, I will drop out of the CQLSH and clear my, uh, clear my uh, view first. And in order to set up Redis, we need to create our custom table that mimics um, Redis deployment and has a bunch of tablets that we share, share across the cluster. So first things first, we will run this administrative command that sets up the Redis table. And this will take a couple of seconds in order to ensure that this gets done across the cluster and everything is successful. And then we just pick up the Redis CLI, which gives us a shell into, the, into our deployment. We can run a, ping, a simple ping command just to validate that the server responds and we get back Pong that someone is actually there and able to, able to respond. Now, we can run a simple set key value. We get an OK back from the server. We can run a get on top of that and confirm that we get back the value that we just wrote. We can also have existence checks for this particular key and we get back, uh, we get back the answer. We can use counters, for example and also get back the answer, we can increment set counters and we can get their actual values. Similarly, we also support hash data types. So for example, we pick up this command for an HM set and we run this, it works perfectly fine and then we can get a particular sub key underneath that. So in this case, username was John. Similarly, we can also get a different key like birthday and this would be the year 1977. And we can also fetch multiple things, including fields that do not exist, where we ensure that the server responds back with nils. And we finally can get the entirety of this, um, of this hash set. And one more thing I want to show you now before I switch to the next section. Again, if we go back to the master view on, uh, on this tab, and I refresh this page here, you will see that now there are 12 tablets per, per tablet server. So if I switch now to the tablet server UI and refresh this, you will see that there is the leftover stock market table that we had created from our previous API. And now there are also tablets for the Redis table that we have just created. And as before, we're be, we're, this particular server is being a follower and the leader for different, uh, different tablets. Let us switch back to the docs now and move on to our YSQL API. So in this particular setup, we have a different way of creating the cluster, which explicitly enables Postgres support because this is currently in beta. So before we actually go through that, we need to actually destroy the initial deployment that we set up for testing both Redis and, uh, and uh, YQL, uh, YQL layer. So I'm gonna switch back to my terminal now, drop out of the Redis shell, clear my, uh, clear my terminal, go back, copy the destroy, once we run this, it will take a little bit for it to kill all the individual processes and ensure they're done and also remove the temporary data location for your cluster. And then we can switch to recreating the cluster, but now with Postgres support. At the end, it actually has to start uh, the Postgres internals and initialize the database uh, metadata that Postgres requires. At, when that is done, it will tell you successfully created the cluster. I'm gonna clear the screen again. Next step would be just to run a status and I will highlight here that you get the same three master nodes, the same three T server nodes, but now you also get a Postgres node that is the way in which we currently support Postgres. So let's actually try out the API. If I copy the next command, we should be able to run PSQL and connect to our cluster. And we are now currently inside. First thing, create a table. Before creating a table, again, create a database, much like creating a key space in the YSQL layer. So I'm gonna run this and our database is created and then I can connect to our database and everything is good. Next thing, we're going to try to create a table, much like before, we'll name it stock market so we can uh, have a similar experience. So I cleared the table, I cleared my, uh, my terminal, run the create table, takes a little bit for the servers to process this and distribute all the, all the data. And now let's insert some actual data into our system. Copying the commands, pasting all of these, and everything should be inserted. I will clear again, and now I will run an actual query, and we should see the six pieces of data we just inserted. And they are going to be all sorted by stock symbol. 
So we see all, all the six rows showing up. Okay, that, uh, that would be everything. I hope by running this, I've convinced you how, uh, how easy it is to get Yugabyte started on your local deployment. If you'd like to try it out yourself, click the link below to, uh, to get started. Thank you.